What's up guys, Crypto Muser here with your daily news and analysis in the crypto markets. Now I have quite a story for you today. Um, obviously markets are in turmoil, extreme fear all over the market. I mean Twitter is a, <laughs> it's pretty entertaining honestly if you ask me because you know I've been in this for about five years now in this market so people out there you know crying, I'm losing money and everybody's just freaking out. This welcome to crypto. This is this is the world of crypto. I know it seems like a crazy uh, one of the craziest days in crypto. Um, if you look in the past, uh, there has been many days and many weeks um, just like this in past bear markets. So get used to this, right? Getting down 35% on some altcoins. That's a that's a very normal sight that I've seen many times in the last five years. Um, this case, though, right? The reason for this happening. Is different though. In, in my opinion, um, obviously this market is very manipulated um, for sure, right? All markets are very manipulated by, by big whales out there that have billions of dollars, but especially this one, this is just, um, it's so shady what happened here with UST coin, Terra. I mean, to think, you know, a top 10 coin like Terra, Luna, to go down 99% basically, right? It was at what, $100? Now it's at, I think, 14 cents I, thought, I saw it this morning. I mean, this is not normal, right? I've never seen, even in the five years I've been in this market, I've never seen a top 10 coin go from, you know, a market size of like 30 billion down to what, I think it's down to like a couple billion now. And I feel sorry for anybody that was involved in that. And it's it's messed up that it happened. And uh, why it happened? Well, I mean, it makes a little, it makes a lot of sense if you, if you put it this way. So I want to get into that story of why I think um, UST was attacked here. I think it was an inside job. I think it was the powers that be, the people that want um, the big banks that do not want DeFi, that do not want stable coins because that takes, you know, the monopoly that the big banks have had for years. Um, it, it takes that away from them, right? If, if there's a stable coin, you can put money in, um, you know, lots of money in and earn 10 to 15 percent. Obviously, that's a big hit against the big banks. They don't want that to happen. So all of a sudden, it's pretty funny. This happens and all of a sudden you hear regulators screaming, oh, we need regulation for these dangerous stable coins now. And it's sad to see because, you know, stable coins and DeFi, this, this is something that levels the playing field for normal people out there. And this type of thing happening um, definitely is going to be detrimental to the future of DeFi and stable coins. Um, but let's get into it. Um, before I do, though, if you guys could please like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. I'm really trying to grow this channel as best I can. I know, it, you know, markets are in turmoil. Um, not a lot of people want to come on YouTube and talk about crypto at the moment. But guys, this is the best time to educate yourselves. These are the times to, you know, learn more about the world of finance because, you know, bear markets can be uh, long and, and, and grueling, right? Take each day and, and learn something, right? That's what I did. You know, I entered this at the start of the, you know, bear market in 2018. So, you know, I just basically sat there and tried to learn as much as I could in this market. And I'm telling you, it, it goes a long way. Once the bull market starts, picks back up, um, you, you're ahead of the game, right? You're ahead of those retail investors that are all leaving the market now, right? Learn as much as you can, you know, while you can. And then when the market starts booming again, uh, that's where you make some life-changing money. So let's get right into it. So this first uh, tweet that I tweeted out over, this is XRP Crypto Wolf. Um, he said that Janet Yellen... Um, the Treasury Secretary, conveniently calls for crypto regulation following the UST crash. What if this was an inside job by the U.S. government to force strict stablecoin regulations? Now, I don't know if it was the U.S. government um, or the, the big banks that basically are, you know, obviously tied to the U.S. government. But, I mean, that, that's what I'm thinking, right? And I tweeted out in, in reply to that tweet. I was saying this yesterday, and I talked about this on my video yesterday. Um, the UST fiasco smells like smells bad, manipulation at its finest. But who was it? Citadel, BlackRock. I mean, they all. I mean, there was a you know a rumor out there. It was Citadel or BlackRock, but they came out yesterday and said it. You know, we've never traded in UST, and it wasn't them. Um, do you believe them? I mean, should we ever believe Citadel and BlackRock? No. I mean, <laughs> would you? No. There's no way. They could easily be denying it. And then the next tweet. I tweeted out um, yesterday was, this was a reply to John Deaton. Now, John Deaton was said, the destruction of Luna and UST is nothing to cheer. Gensler and Warren, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Gary Gensler, obviously you know who they are, um, will use this as Exhibit A uh, for the need of regulations. 
Appropriate regulation of stable coins is one thing, but they will use this to promote overregulation outside of stable coins and push for a CBDC. Now, I think CBDCs are, uh, can be a good thing, but obviously they can be a bad thing, right? If, if, if they go the China route and have a CBDC that they can tr control and they can basically control your wallet, so everybody has a wallet and they can basically see every um, transaction that you make and, and they, it's, uh, you know, in that way, yes, it can be dangerous and we can't go down that route. Um, the best thing we can do to stop that is vote in the people, the right people in office and, you know, keep them accountable. That's the best we can do. But, you know, CBDs are happening. That's 100% for sure. Um, the way that they will try to use them, that's where we need to fight the power. And, and this is where it gets, where the manipulation here, this is where, I, like, I don't trust anybody, right? I mean, the, the way I've learned in my life, I don't trust anything or anybody, right? I do my own research. I get to the bottom of anything. I do not trust someone telling me something. Um, you know, I don't give anybody the benefit of the doubt. I just, that's the way I am. That's what I've learned in my life. Um, so when you know, the government or these banks say they're going to do something. Um, I just don't believe it. So I have to, you know, we have to, it's about, it's up to the, honestly, it's up to the crypto community to band together and make this happen the right way. Right. But, um, so I replied to John Deaton's tweet and said, dead on. That's why I think this was a coordinated attack by powers that obviously do not want DeFi and stable coins to exist. Like I said earlier in the video, um, you know, DeFi and stable coins, this is a way for ordinary people to earn money, right? Everybody, all these big banks, they want, they want your money in the bank, right? They want your money in the savings accounts, right? You don't earn anything with that. What, what the banks do is they take your money and they earn interest by lending it out to other people. Meanwhile, you get nothing for, for holding your bank, hold your money in a bank. Um, years ago, uh, like I mentioned in my video yesterday, years ago, the banks would, you know, share that profit um, with the people that, would hold your money in the bank, right? They give you, you know, if, if the bank takes your money and lends it out, it would give you, you know, a good percentage, you know, anyway from five to 10% to 15% at times. Now they don't give you anything. Right now they charge you to hold your money in their bank, right? I see um, if you go under under $150,000 in some accounts, um, <laughs> they will charge you $95 a month. I mean, this is the craziness of what these big banks have, have, uh, have done to ordinary people out there. They just like, and with the ATM fees and the monthly fees and all this garbage out there, um, this is how they just basically, you know, get richer and they, they keep the poor poor, right? Um, but these DeFi products could change that game, right? Could change the whole world of finance and level that playing field. And obviously there's going to be some, you know, there's already been some serious fight back um, from these, you know, big banks. But this is, this is getting to a level where obviously um, this is playing dirty. And would you expect anything less from the banks? No. So the next thing I want to talk about here is, so Digital Asset Investor uh, tweeted this in response to, uh, so the Squawk Box on CNBC had, of all people, Jay Clayton to talk about everything going on in crypto right now. And I just thought it was hilarious too. And even Digital Asset, Asset Investor said, boy, if you can't see this market collapse was engineered uh, or at minimum leveraged to bring in regulation, Wall Street, um, Wall Street, you just aren't paying attention. Exactly what I was saying, saying in this video. And it's funny. So Jay Clayton comes on here. I'm not going to play the video, but he comes on in here and says, you know, this is me and Gary Gensler believe in the same things. And, you know, we think that we need real regulation in this space and we need to protect investors. Oh, my God. The whole, you know, what a bullshit <laughs> interview this was. I mean, this guy could care less about investors. Obviously, Gary Gensler could care less about investors. Um, they work on behalf of the big banks, you know, uh, Goldman Gary and Jay Clayton here, who's, uh, you know, I think before he became the chair of the SEC, there was like serious questions on um, conflicts of interest with him off the bat, right off the bat, because he was, you know, an attorney for the big banks for years. And it's just crazy to think that obviously you think they just because they joined the SEC, they're going to all of a sudden uh, care about everyday investors. No, right. They come in to the SEC for four years. Um, they bolster up their, um, the way so they can make money when they leave. And then they, when they leave, you know, where did Jay Clayton go when he left? Adreesan Horowitz. Uh, um, no, I don't think he went to Adreesan. I think him and went to Adreesan Horowitz. Um, Clayton went to, uh, Apollo crypto, uh, fund and a bunch of just big banks and crypto funds, right? Highly invested in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So, so obviously, you know, Jay Clayton, 
Bill Hinman, everybody, Gary Gensler, all working on behalf of the big banks. I mean, is it so surprising that this kind of attack could happen to push regulation um, to obviously shut down, not shut down, but maybe slow down DeFi and stable coins? So the next thing here, uh, this is very interesting. So this was six months ago. So uh, who tweeted this out? Your number one source of, of absurdist true crime um, tweeted this out yesterday. Six months ago, the guy from Terra, obviously Do Kwon, uh, mocking the idea that this precise attack could happen. Um, so Do Kwon, this is six months ago. Probably the most retarded threat I've ever seen in a decade. Silence is perfectly acceptable option of stup if stupid. Billionaires in my following, go ahead, see what happens. Now listen to what this guy Freddie Reynolds said about Terra Labs. Um, this is six months ago, by the way. November 28, uh, November 28, 2021. A few weeks ago, I responded to Do Kwon, uh, Do Kwon's tweet with a brief outline of how a healthy, or sorry, how a wealthy attacker could not only break Terra, but profit heavily doing it with a Soros-style Black Wednesday attack. Below, I provide a detailed breakdown with one billion capital needed. Now, he breaks it down. Uh, they don't have the full tweet, but he breaks down how they could, um, you know, basically do this attack on the USD coin, T coin that is, you know, was pegged to Bitcoin and uh, Tether. So they basically said this is how it could happen. This is six months ago. And then Do Kwon's over there saying, yeah, good luck with that. That's never going to happen. Um, you know, and it's so funny, even weeks ago, People were talking about how UST coin was the best stable coin out there, right? This new algorithmic stable coin, you know, pegged to the pegged to Bitcoin and pegged to US Tether. I mean, I didn't understand what they were talking about. Everybody was so obsessed with it. But I was like, how can a stable coin be pegged to Bitcoin? It makes no sense to me at all. How can a stable coin be pegged to a highly volatile asset like Bitcoin? I mean, they said there was this algorithm that you know that the more in in every all I saw in the last you know month or so was Do Kwon buying all this using all the terror money and buying all this Bitcoin so they could back their stable coin. And I'm like this just does not seem sustainable. Something's shady about this. You know I was telling people to stay away from Luna, stay away from the UST coin. Um, and what happened? Look, and I feel so bad for, for people that you know got burnt by this. This is basically a rug pull, and. You know, Do Kwon, is he to blame? Was this an inside attack? Was this BlackRock? Was this Citadel? I mean, these are the questions that we're, we all should be asking. And, you know, are we going to get the answers to it? Probably not. But this is shady as hell, right? And this is the last thing we needed for crypto because look what's happening. You have regulators out there. You have the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen. You have, you know, Elizabeth Warren. I haven't heard her yet, but I'm sure she's going to be going off on this one. Gary Gensler's already been talking about that this is why we need regulation. I mean, this is the exact opposite of we need what we needed for, you know, crypto right now. So could this be bad for crypto? Is it bad for crypto at the moment? Obviously. My battery's dying again. But, I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, uh, Do Kwon here with Terra had to sell all their Bitcoin. I think it, was, it was like $2 billion worth of Bitcoin they had to sell. And what that what happened there... It, triggered this huge sell-off in the markets. And that combined with, you know, the the inflation numbers, obviously the stock market, and other markets are crashing too. So this just added on to the already bad week we were going to have anyway. So, you know, is this a black swan event? Basically, but on top, it's like a black swan event on top of like terrible markets in the first place. So this is what happens when, you know, everything comes together. Um, in such a bad way for crypto. But like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a, we've seen this before. This is nothing new. I've seen, you know, crypto fall 30, 40% in a day. That's, I mean, the last week, I haven't seen Luna. I haven't seen a coin, a top 10 coin fall 99%. That's a new one for me. But as I'm stating in this video, this is why it happened. So what else happened that we didn't see? I, I mean, I didn't see this, that this report. The SEC uh, filed a lawsuit against Terraform Labs and uh, Do, Do Kwon. This is uh, February 17, 2022. It's a couple months ago. Now, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission filed this application for an order requiring compliance with investigative subpoenas for documents and testimonies served on Terraform Labs. Um, 
and its co-founder and chief executive officer, Do Kwan. In September 2021, in connection with the SEC's investigation titled In the Matter of Mirror Protocol, uh, the court has reviewed all parties filed and held oral argument on February 17, 2022 by telephone conference. For the reasons stated on the record by uh, February 17, 2022 conference, the SEC's application is granted. The Terraform and Quan are hereby ordered to comply with the above reference subpoenas. This order is stayed for 14 days to permit further briefing regarding a potential stay pending any appeal of this order. So, obviously, um, I mean, who knows, because the SEC comes after, you know, Ripple, they come after the library for, you know, shady issues, but there was a reason why they filed this lawsuit against Terraform Labs and Do Kwan. Was there something there? Um, is Do Kwan a shady individual? I mean, I think we're going to find out, right? And and after all the, you know, this all settles, at some point in time, we're going to find out uh, how this attack on UST coin, how it happened, um, who was involved. Uh, was Do Kwan somehow involved in this, in this too? Was he a shady individual? Was he was this a rug pull? Um, at some point in time, like I said, we're going to figure out all the facts in this uh, in this case and in what happened. So right now, I mean, there's a lot of speculation out there. Was it Citadel? Was it um, was it BlackRock? Was it Do Kwan? Was it an inside attack? Shady deal. That's all I'm saying. And and like I said, it was it all. I mean, was the crash all to do with this huge UST? Um, fiasco? No, but it had a lot. I mean, it definitely, it was a, a couple of things, I feel like, that added to, to this uh, huge crash we just had. Obviously, the stock market, um, um, you know, the inflation numbers didn't help that either. So I think it was a lot of different factors that caused this huge crash that we're seeing. Um, how low is it going to go? I mean, we're going to find out. I think we're find, slowly finding our bottom here. Um, could it be 28000 there? Uh, could it be 26,000? Um, I think we will have a little retrace. I think at some point in time we are going down to 16, anywhere from 16 to 14,000. But I think I don't think we just keep falling down to that. I think at some point we have a relief rally. Um, we make it back to those retracement levels um, and see some relief in this market. But at some point in this bear market, um, I think we're going to see sub 20,000 for Bitcoin. Um, I, I don't think it's going to go straight down there. I think that we might find our bottom here at 20, 28, 26, and then have a relief lot rally maybe up to, you know, 50,000. Um, but obviously I'm not, I mean, no one really knows, but I just, you know, I just don't think we just keep falling down. And, and if this has, um, if this is like, it's like any other market cycle that we've had, um, uh, in 2017, 2014, it's never just gone straight down like this. Right. At some point, we will have relief, relief rally um, in crypto and on and, uh, the stock market. So I guess time will tell. Um, so Coinbase. <laughs> uh, this is one of the exchanges I just never trusted. Um, you know, the fees are always high. I never trusted Brian Armstrong that ran Coinbase. Um, obviously, Coinbase is losing tons of money in the last couple of months. Their stock is falling from... I think it opened up at like 300. Now it's down to about 45, I want to say. Um, even lower, maybe 30, 39. I mean, so they're losing tons of money. Um, they just filed a report and they said they lost, I think it was $430 million in the last quarter. Well, just when they had that uh, quarterly report where they lost, you know, I think I think it was $425 million, I want to say. But just when we get that quarterly report where they lost, uh, you know, a lot of money, we get this. And this was a, uh, so Coinbase latest filing with the SEC says, in the event of a bankruptcy, our customers should be treated as our general unsecured creditors. In other words, when they eventually go bankrupt, they will use your crypto to bail themselves out. And here's the, the down here. So moreover, because custodially held crypto assets may be considered to be the property of the bankruptcy estate, in the event of bankruptcy, the crypto assets be, uh, we hold in custody on behalf of our customers sh uh, could be subject to bankruptcy proceedings, and such customers could be treated as our general unsecured creditors. I mean, it's right there, right? And then you had Coinbase and Brian Armstrong come out after this came out and saying, no, no, don't worry. Uh, our customers are safe. We're, not, we're definitely not going to go bankrupt, so don't worry. 
I mean, <laughs> you cannot say that. When you just lost $425 million um, and a quarter, and you see the way crypto's going right now, I mean, you could easily go bankrupt. Don't say that can never happen, because if it does happen, why would I hold my money in Coinbase? Why would I take this risk and have my money on Coinbase? Definitely don't have your money on exchanges anyway, and this is just another reason why you should not have your money on exchanges. You know, not your not your keys, not your not your crypto, right? Put it on a hardware wallet. Put it on a nano ledger. Um, guys, just be safe, right? Do not trust these exchanges. And obviously, do not trust Coinbase. I never trusted Coinbase anyway. So I'll end the video uh, on this last thing. This is Eleanor Tourette. She's the uh, Fox Business reporter. Um, she said this, and it just made me just understand that, you know, we're, we need to think about this in, in a in the broad scheme of things here. So it's crazy to think that just six months ago, the global crypto market was worth $3 trillion. And today it's down to $1.21 trillion. Half the value wiped out in a half a year. Where did all that money go? Where did, where did $1.6 trillion go? Or $1.8 trillion? Where did that, all that money go? Was it even real in the first place? Was this all manipulation? Um... It's hard to believe that, you know, a lot of people out there now are crying. Crypto's dead. Um, you know, it's all going to zero. You know, all the, the haters out there now are, oh, I told you so. You know, Bitcoin's going to zero. This was all a big, big uh, Ponzi scheme, right? No. You look at a 10, uh, a, you know, the last 10 years on a, on a yearly chart or a weekly chart, monthly chart, um, the crypto will survive through this, guys. I mean, if you've done your research and you know where you're, what, what you're in here, Yes, I think 95% of, of most coins that do nothing, that are just basically rug pulls or you know people trying to raise money for nothing, um, from nothing, that those are gonna, those projects are going to go to zero. Look what just happened to Luna. Top 10 coin going to zero. So it's all about really doing your research and educating yourself in the space and finding projects um, that have a future, that actually do something, right? Bitcoin will be around for the extended future. XRP, I believe, will be around for the extended future. Ethereum, you know, the top 20 coins or so, you got to do your research into them. But, you know, that's why recently, in the last couple of weeks, I've consolidated my portfolio into, you know, I had like 35, 40 coins. Now it's down to 15 coins, right? I have 15 coins that I've done, you know, extended research into that I believe um, that have future. Yeah, will some of those coins maybe go to zero? Maybe. But... You know, I've de-risked my portfolio now to have 15 coins. You know, when I had 32 coins, you know, it was spread out to a bunch of coins that maybe maybe had a future, but, you know, I just didn't trust them anymore. I'm not going to name those coins. Um, you know, obviously, this is not financial advice. Do your own research. But, you know, it's about really um, breaking it down now. Now, since we are entering a bear market here, and I believe so. If you don't believe we're in a bear market, I don't know what to tell you. But... At some point in time, regulation is coming in, especially with this Terra, Terra Labs fiasco. Regulation is coming, right? XRP in this lawsuit with the SEC, XRP will be the one, of the only coin. It will be the only coin with clarity in this market when this lawsuit is over. So, and the, the way Ripple utilizes XRP, XRP is already being used elsewhere around the world. So, I believe in XRP. Bitcoin, I believe in Bitcoin. There are enough institutions and Big players involved have, have solidified, I believe, solidified Bitcoin's future. Um, a lot of people out there are just saying, oh, it's only Bitcoin now, and I don't trust any other altcoin. I'm not in that camp. You know, obviously, there's 20,000 plus coins out there. Yes, 95% um, of those will be gone. So it's about doing research. It's about educating yourself. And as we get into the bear market, guys, you know, learn. Keep learning every day. Educate yourself in the world of finance and the way currencies work, the way money works, the way the payment systems work in this, in this world that we live in. And I'm telling you guys, once you do that research and put those hours in, it'll become clear and you'll feel more comfortable in putting your money in some of these assets. But I will end the video there. Just remember, uh, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Um, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Please do not take anything I write or say as financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. And thanks, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.